I would like to introduce Dr. Sheetal Bra. She's a senior consultant at the FECO and Refractive Surgery Department and a research coordinator at the Netadama Eye Hospital. She has been a user of the iCryophagic hours for the last seven plus years and will talk about the dynamic world changes following iCryophagic hours versus vision ICL, a comparative study results. Thank you, Dr. Breyer, for the kind introduction, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Khalsa and Biotech Healthcare for inviting me to this wonderful symposium that gives me a chance to uh, share with you all results of a very interesting study that we did at our center, which is about comparison of dynamic wall changes following eye fakic versus the star uh, vision ICL. So, uh, this is known that achieving appropriate vault is the main challenge after implantation of any posterior phacic IOL implant. And traditionally, what we have been doing all these years is measuring the vault in static terms. So when I say static terms, it means we measure the vault at a specific time and under specific environmental light conditions. However, this is also known that the vault varies both with time as well as also depends upon various ocular parameters such as accommodation, pupil size, as well as the light conditions. So what is dynamic vault exactly? In, so dynamic vault refers to in vivo changes in post-operative vault in a phacic IOL implanted eye resulting from variations in the external brightness, which means that whenever we vary the brightness, the vault can change. So if the person, if the patient goes from a scotopic to a, a mesopic or a photopic light condition, because of the pupil constriction, there is a chance that the pupil, uh, while it's constricting, it also pushes the uh, lens down, and this can actually uh, reduce the uh, vault temporarily. So this describes the position of the fake IOL in the eye, which is more accurate, realistic, and physiological. Why it is important to study this? So I think it is important because uh, the, the range of variations in the vault that happen due to this change in the light conditions can actually have clinically significant repercussions depending upon how the fake IOL behaves. Does it move closer to the crystalline lens or, or away from it? So it's important to know this. As well as uh, I think it's more significant in those patients wherein uh, you end up having a lower vault Anything less than 250 microns we consider as lower, so these patients have to be at a close follow-up for development of cataract in the long term. Uh, so when we say dynamic wall changes, I think there are two main factors that come into play. The first factor is the posterior movement of the implant, and the second fa factor is the forward movement of the crystalline lens. So whenever the pupil constricts, uh, both things can happen. The lens can go down, and the crystalline lens can also come forward. The first factor in turn can also depend upon how much the pupil constricts, which means degree of the pupil reconstriction, as well as the material of the implant. And this is what we wanted to study through um, our research. And uh, the question was, the research question was, can the material of the implant actually influence the dynamic vault range? And uh, as uh, we already know that there are three different models. Uh, the STAR ICL is uh, made up of uh, Colamer, and the Icrefacic and IPCL are, uh, the material is a hydrophilic acrylic material. And from where this concept actually came, so uh, there was an interesting study uh, published in ophthalmology in 2007 that actually uh, looked at the vault changes in uh, light conditions, different light conditions, using the PRL lens. So I'm not sure even if this lens is now available or not, but the material of this lens was hydrophobic and this was a posterior uh, chamber lens, and they found that the vault largely remained unaffected uh, using this lens in the light conditions. So, and they attributed this to the material of the uh, implant. So this is uh, also already known, uh, the various differences between the two uh, lenses, uh, which were the uh, comparator lenses in the study. So uh, the porcelain and uh, the star ICL, uh, the material is porcine columnar, which is much more softer and flexible, uh, whereas uh, the icrylfacic lens is uh, hydrophilic acrylic material, uh, slightly stiffer, and uh, this is why we thought uh, it's, it would be interesting to see how the wall changes uh, with the two 
implants. So the aim was to evaluate and compare the dynamic wall changes following the implantation of two different models of AK chiols for myopia and myopic astigmatism, ICL versus icrel phacic. We also included the toric models of both. The study design was retrospective and it consisted of 60, 60 eyes from 36 subjects with 30 eyes in each group and we also included uh, bilateral uh, operated patients. Preoperatively, except for the mean keratometry, all the other parameters were perfectly matched. There was no significant difference between the two groups. And uh, the dynamic vault was evaluated using the MS-39 in three different light conditions. So uh, we measured in the scotopic light condition, which was 0 0.04 lux intensity, uh, mesopic light condition with 4 lux intensity, and photopic light condition with 60 lux of in light intensity. This is a short video of how we recorded the vault in different light conditions. So the MS-39 provides us with the option of uh, capturing the vault as a photo or as a video in scotopic, mesopic, and photopic conditions. You can see as the pupil constricts, the vault also changes. So uh, post-operatively, these were the results actually. Uh, we had a variable follow-up uh, in both the groups. Uh, however, it was almost uh, similar, 9.4 months in the ICL group and uh, 8.9 months in the ICL group. Now, if you look at the highlighted values, the vault range, this is, which is very significant here. The change in the vault, the mean change in the vault from scotopic to photopic condition in the ICL group was 121 microns versus only 65 microns in the ICL group. So uh, this was very interesting to see actually. And uh, then we were actually also um, not very sure whether this is, is this only because of the implant or also because of the crystalline lens forward movement because we also had to uh, see whether the movement of the crystalline lens was similar in both the groups or not. So, uh, so this is one case where um, you can see this is the ICL group. Can we play this video please? Yeah, just notice that the scotopic vault was 559, photopic vault was 381, and dynamic vault change was 178 microns in this group, so almost 180 microns. Whereas in the next, so this is the ICRIL, one of the cases in the ICRIL group. Please play the video. So here the scotopic vault change, uh, the dynamic vault change is hardly 24 microns. You actually can visually see that there's not much of a change with this lens. And we also thought we should also see whether the pupil constriction is similar and there was no significant difference uh, from scotopic to, uh, to photopic uh, light condition in terms of the pupil constrictions. So we measured uh, ACD1, which is anterior chamber one depth. That was the measurement from endothelium to anterior surface of the crystalline lens. So this value would actually give us the degree of forward movement of the crystalline lens during changing light conditions. And we also found that there was no significant difference in both the groups. It was around 20 microns of the crystalline lens forward movement. Then we also measured change in anterior chamber depth two, and this was the distance from endothelium to the anterior surface of the fakie chiol. Now, if this changes, we actually are sure that it is the lens which is going down and not the crystalline uh, lens coming up. So this distance was from endothelium to the anterior surface. Uh, that shows the degree of backward movement of the fakie chiol during light conditions, different light conditions. And you can see the difference here is, again, very significant, 98 microns change in the ICL group from scotopic to photopic, whereas only 49 microns change in the ICL group. Now, uh, why this is uh, important? If you look at the various, uh, the conditions, uh, uh, the lux of the light intensities, which is used while performing our routine activities, as routine as, you know, uh, uh, going to the office, working in an office, in the classroom, doing normal office work, PC work, going to the supermarket. So the light intensity, if you see, varies from 100 to 1,000. And uh, the light conditions under which we studied these changes was 50 lux. 
So you can imagine that if the patient is, you know, even in the routine, they don't, have, don't even have to go into the bright sunlight because that's very less, uh, you know, number of times that the patient would actually go. Even in the routine light conditions itself, how many times the lens would be, you know, changing, the vault would be changing. It's, it would be interesting to actually see if the, uh, the long-term uh, changes uh, in these cases. So uh, the potential limitations were we included both eyes of the same patient and the follow-up was variable. And since we know that the vault itself can change with time, so uh, it may be better to study this through a prospective compar comparison study and uh, evaluate the changes uh, at different time periods uh, from uh, at a longer uh, follow-up, say one year or two years. However, uh, this would be, I think, to my knowledge, uh, is the first comparison study that throws light on basically the differences, how the two different types of lenses behave in, with different light conditions and also contribute to our improved understanding of the long-term safety with respect to ketoptogenesis in these cases. So I would conclude by saying that both lenses actually showed a significant reduction in the central vault in response to varying light conditions. However, Icryl Fakic Iwell showed a 56 micron difference in the dynamic vault range, which was almost half of the change compared to the ICL. And this was mainly attributed to the downward movement of the lens, uh, which is in turn due to the material, because we saw that the crystalline lens rise was the same in both groups. And this could be significant in eyes with low vault with regard to their follow-ups, and also might be helpful for you to decide about uh, when would you want to exchange the lens or explant the lens if it's, it's uh, touching or it's going too down. So uh, finally, however, we need prospective studies with larger sample sizes and serial and long-term follow-ups suggested to verify these preliminary uh, findings. Uh, however, I feel these findings are very interesting and opens uh, doors for uh, future research. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheeta. That was a very interesting work and uh, the right way to think. If you implant both uh, ICLs, you could think that should be the way it is, but you proved it. That's a difference. Thank uh, you. And a very good study. I would like to discuss you, uh, perhaps with Dr. Anko Barua, about uh, the question, might this have a long-term endothelial cell count effect, or, should it, or could it also have a clinical significant effect on the vision? Perhaps if you two discuss it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got a patient who's got a toric fake um, ICL, and the patient's got auto rotation of the lens. If you go so, close it to uh, it's, it's on, oh. right? Is this yeah. your, is your question it. regarding my presentation? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so with the dynamic changes, do you think there's more chance of auto rotation with, the, with more dynamic changes of the vault? Do you think that there's a link between mm, those two? Maybe possible, but again, I think, uh, as I said, it, uh, the vault depends upon the material which we have shown through this study. So I think rotation also would depend on that. You know, the ICL, the toric ICL might have more chances of rotation because of the same reasons. Yeah. I mean, I find the biotech, uh, it's a stiffer material. It's stiff and uh, it's more stable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting uh, presentation.